Hi. Hello. 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 Um, we are doing Lisa Jules. None of this is true. Very, very exciting. So um, we read this one right after Verity and well, for me. Yeah. And Chi Chi did the opposite way. Right. So, well, OK. So just a little, you know, going back to the beginning of how this started. I read None of This Is True mm -hmm. and you had contacted me on Instagram because I love to share with everybody what I read. And you said we should start a, a pod, you know, not podcast. We should start a, a book club. And I was like, oh, man, yes. And you have to read this book. So forewarning, mm -hmm. I love this book. And I'm just probably going to rave about it the whole time. I like this book, too. Okay. Yeah, I liked it, too. I wasn't a fan of the ending, you which we're going like to discuss. as much as I liked it. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, now there's the little tension between yes. us. But that has not stopped me from purchasing another Lisa Jewell book. Yeah. And we've added another Lisa Jewell book onto our I TBR. Can't. I can't. Lisa so, Jewell, if you're listening to this, I like your writing a lot. <laughs> me as well i i listen so yes and the main and the difference here too so when we're reviewing this book and we're talking about this book i listened to this book yeah um versus chi chi read it yeah i listened to it it was a nice full cast and mm -hmm. which i really liked the different um voices the perspectives and on and audible, right. on audible yeah. and um what i thought stood out yeah. was when they transitioned to the podcast and made it sound like we were kind of getting that inside documentary scoop right did you like that well you know why don't we summarize the book okay first so oh, that, that makes people, sense that makes sense yeah yeah so the people yep. know exactly yep. what we're that talking sense. about that makes sense and we have recorded this before and you had the best i know i know this is our technical so fix take us there again oh yeah. gosh um okay let me see if i can remember what i said so this book is about two women who share the same birthday mm -hmm. and they come together to join um and work on a project yeah this project ends up taking a major twist which leads to some deception it leads to um, murder like, it leads to like us, like lots of violence it leads to us discovering like and questioning what is real whose truth absolutely, is real absolutely. and we're kind of just left with this i don't want to say cliffhanger so this was the thing about the ending right so um and if you haven't listened to our podcast before uh we usually do a whole lot of spoilers um right so spoiler alert. Alert. if you plan on reading this book kind of spoil it from here on um so the ending of the book right so the entire book has established this narrative structure that follows um these two women um josie and Al alex josie and alex and alex is a podcaster and josie is the sort of like average woman who's seeking to revamp her life right and she she sees josie as her way to do that right um, so they record the entire podcast, but towards the end of it, part of, uh, you'd guess Josie's plan. She sees Alex, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up the names. She sees Alex as her way into revamping her life. But as they record the entire podcast, uh, Josie um, ends up doing really insane things, um, including mm -hmm. murdering her husband, tying up her own daughter, um, her autistic child in a closet and murdering Alex's husband. And no, Chantal does not like the end because oh, she's never found. Josie's never found. However, she is seen right at the at the end of the book on a bus listening to women who uh, have heard Alex's podcast and have heard sort of different things and are questioning um, some of the um, information that they've received from the podcast. And um, Josie sends Alex a letter saying that she never intended to kill her husband. And how could she believe basically what everybody has been saying about her, including her own Right. Children. Throughout the entire book, we are walked through Josie's perception mm -hmm. of what is going on in the story. So yeah. we are on Josie's side. We're we're listening to her. Well, for me, I was on Josie's side. I'm You're listening to Josie's her. side? Well, yeah. Well, in terms of her her. Uh, life thus far i'm not on terms i wasn't on her side with regards to her being creepy. oh god creepy. you agree everything exactly. that she said yeah, okay, yeah. yeah i'm not saying like her actions are, right were um, acceptable and right. how she was stalking and obsessed with right alex that's no, no no just that her perception of her story right i was believing her story 
And then we find out that, okay, this might not be the case. I think it is the case because she does, yes, kidnap uh, Josie's husband. Uh, sorry, Alex's husband. Now you're making me mix up the names. Kidnaps her husband, ends up killing him. And then everyone comes forward to talk about how crazy Josie is right. um, in terms of her obsessions, her um, the lies that she's been telling and and everything like that. So yes, you're right. I was not happy with the way things ended because I just felt like if this was all a lie, she's done this before mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she'll probably continue to do it. I don't think this was a one-off and she should have at least been, if not captured, like my two scenarios are she gets recognized by these two girls on the bus, she gets captured and she, you know, faces some kind of justice whatever that looks like yeah okay or or we get a snippet okay like five years later <laughs> and she's doing it again she's found some other uh, person that she's obsessing with and you know goes down this whole whole spiral i have had some time to reflect on it oh good okay and i still really like i said i really enjoyed this book yeah i just do prefer and as other books that I've recommended that we read yeah. and we will continue to read. Um, I do like when things are tied up with a pretty little this bow. This was what I was hoping you would say. <laughs> I like It doesn't have to be a happy bow. It doesn't have to be a happy ending. Okay, I'm not like you like a happy ending. When things are neatly concluded and there's no questions yes. left yes. unanswered. And maybe that's why I'm not, I don't pick up thrillers too often because okay. maybe not all thrillers. And like you kind of adds that suspense and when it, it ends on a twist it keeps you guessing right mm -hmm. that's the whole point of the thriller is to keep you guessing to keep you in yes. suspense yes. so when it doesn't end perfectly okay that makes sense because that's right. part of the genre um okay but yeah i just would have liked a little bit more of a bow put on it i just felt that we kind of jumped to the conclusion too quickly i this is not a knock to the writer unlike previously before the author sorry clarify that we just what conclusion we we kind of just alex's husband was murdered mm -hmm. you know okay they're at the funeral and then all of a sudden she gets this letter like it just felt very choppy Abrupt. towards the end okay. and maybe that's me because like i i actually have this critique about another author who we're going to review about oh. Kristen Henna is the exact same thing. Oh. And I loved that book. I am putting that top book. We're not talking about that, but I'll, we will talk about that in, in, in our next podcast. But it's just for me, it's just me. Okay. Um, but that's kind of what I found. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, okay, we're there. Oh, okay, we're there. Oh, okay, we're there already. We're getting to that point. So I, th I felt that that whole ending was kind of just... That is neat. That's so I know that I've told you this before. One of my um, biggest, I guess, critique um, of the book, and it's not really a critique. It's just I think that the author writes really powerfully. And I think that the tension and the climax was really intense, mm -hmm. right? The middle part of the book and, you know, 75% of the book was it kept you at this state, state of anxiety, just wanting to know what happens next, that when it does happen, it kind of falls flat, right? Because she's done a good, such a good job yeah, setting fair. it up. That's fair. Um, and this is more of um, a commentary on just the structure and okay. the writing style. Yeah, that's fair. Um, as opposed to like not like the yeah. theme of the actual that's book. Fair. That's fair. Uh, a it, good it, way to put what I just said like beautifully. Okay. Right? I, I did. Yeah. But when it comes to the end, did I feel that everything was actually neatly tied up? I think that she does tie things up. In terms of the narrative, like in terms right. of this her narrative, narrative her exactly. Narrative. Yeah. That, this narrative that she's established. But I just didn't agree with it. That she, exactly. <laughs> so the points that she's established, I think she did a really wonderful job tying it up. And I think, so when I think about what happened, right? And uh, so essentially, Josie and the narrative tries to disrupt this notion of truth that it is established yeah. through this letter. Yeah. Um, through this letter um, that uh, Josie sent Alex, uh, basically stating, sort of completely breaking down right. everything that right. She's... So we're we're believe the whole book to proceed. Sorry to mean to cut you off. Yeah, go. We believe this whole book, Josie's perspective. Then we find out this might not be the case. Exactly. And then the letter now brings us back to the fact that oh no, my Josie's perspective, her her view on things 
is actually true. Okay, but then who are it we to believe? It do, but hang on, right. it she, she does kind of she she admits to a lot of things, right? Right in this letter, but it still leaves it open to because you were questioning things, right? That she that potentially was or that oh my goodness, you were questioning things that may or may not have happened. Versus I, you know, again, we're, we're referencing back to our first recording of this podcast and our thoughts on it. But basically, like we had differences in opinion on perceptions and what is real. And did this letter, you know, change that? Did that, you know, alter anything on how we felt about Josie, how we felt about Alex? Right. Yeah, I think because I think. Well, okay. If, if I would boil down what the uh, author and the narrative is trying to establish, which is that trauma obscures realities and nobody's ideas or accounts of an event can solely be relied upon as factual or truth. Um, so the whole time we're believing what um, Josie is saying and then to find out, hang on a second, Right. Here's here's this person's perspective of events. And then we hear again from Josie right. uh, completely disrupting that uh, version yes. of truth. And then we're one- left wondering, well, as the title uh, suggests, I was just none of the same. About it. What is the truth? I just so what I that. love that is what I think. And it took a while to actually be distant away from the book mm-hmm. to allow the themes yeah, to that. really percolate on them. Yeah. Um, because initially... Again, with how the writing to not the writing, but the structure fell flat in terms of the climax and then going down from such a high to a low. I I wasn't able to really accept, like appreciate the nuance and the depth of what the the book is trying to go get, you know, get at. Um, But once I took that step away from it, I realized, hang on. okay, this letter, it's not actually saying that Josie's accounts in the letter were to be believed either. It's just saying. This is another version based on mm. what she thinks she's doing. Right. I, mean, I don't know, because she said, like, how could you believe those people? Right. <laughs> her people being her husband and her uh, daughters. Yeah. I never questioned the the truth. Um, but again, what truth? Right. What is truth? Right. Um, so I think in that way, Lisa Jewell did a, a fantastic job because we're we are literally debating or think we're, we're, we're not debating. Mm-hmm. We are debating even within ourselves, okay. like while we're reading. Okay, well, what is true? I know no. what is what is happening, and even again at the end, you and I are still debating. Like, what's the best ending? How could this possibly? What 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 is justice? What is for me anyway? That's what I'm thinking. Um, right, and this this <laughs> this is actually it says a lot about us as readers. What we expect from the book, yes. right? Like, you want there to be justice at least in the character, unless she gets her deserving ending. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it sounds great to me. Yeah. yeah. But I think I I actually am more empathetic to uh, Josie. I think she's completely, she's a lunatic, of course, and she's crazy. But I felt like justice for Josie would not be imprisonment. Um, this is somebody who has been harmed through intergenerational violence and trauma. Her husband, uh, another spoiler, I mean, the whole thing is a spoiler, but her husband is, Mm -hmm. I think, several, like several decades older older than her. Yeah, he's a pedophile. He was 40 when when he was 42, I think. Yeah, he was 42 and she was 14 14, like that when they initially met. Oh, my gosh. Um, Her mother uh, was a single mother who felt that she had uh, completely destroyed her entire entire career just to have this child mm-hmm. so it really unloaded a lot of baggage on Josie as a child yep. so the entire time you get this idea like when the narrative flips because initially you don't know that Josie's kind of crazy yes right when the book starts but part way through some of these behaviors and her you're starting to pick and, up the pieces right like it's just ugh. so it starts establishing this idea that Josie's a yeah. sociopath yeah but then but you then, also kind of feel sorry for her too exactly. because of her her at, as at at some point, you stop feeling sorry for her. Yeah, um, towards the because get towards the end when you think yeah. that she's murdered everybody. Oh yes, yeah, you stop feeling yes, sorry. Yes, you think course, this woman is course, completely sociopathic, of course. of course, and she's a narcissist, right? It really establishes the oh, idea that she's a nar- wow. narcissist. Her yeah, mother does yes. a good job saying that. Yes, but then right at the end with that letter, hang on a second, right? With the letter, what if Josie didn't mean 
to kill Alex's husband, right? She kills Alex's husband. What What if it was accidental? Because she said it was an accident. She did say it was an accident. I don't believe it. I know. I know. I know. I don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe I, Now, I, again, just hearing those accounts, I don't believe anything. But what, it's not about what you believe. What if she thinks that it was, what if she what never in her perception of reality? Exactly. I know. What if that is her perception? Oh, so how do you deal because, justice? Because she doesn't have an accurate perception of reality. No, she doesn't. But nobody her. really does. Well, I mean, that's what the book I is trying to get out with that. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> love how frustrated. <laughs> this is what I love about you as a reader. You're like, no, yeah, I don't know. I, but, mean, I mean, like this. Is, I hear what you're saying, and I, I, and and I think what the more like what the moral of what we're trying to say is that Lisa Jewell did a great she job. Really did because. Well, you read it different, not differently. Of course, you, yeah. You perceived it. Di- your perception of the perception <laughs> was different than my perception of the perception of the perception of the perception. Uh-huh. Right? It's like uh, you know, like uh, the looking glass and inception. Exactly. Whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah. I do, and love that for me. Anyways, sidetrack. Yeah, like I, I do think it. It is a, almost like a through the looking glass mm-hmm. moment, right? Like, and again, I, it's why I am intrigued. I not only did I think Lisa Jewell did a great job with this the, her 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 language and yes we kind of crit- critiqued her structure but i still think it was a great book for this genre and and i don't read a lot of these yeah. so from for me i don't know if my my perspective or my opinion is worth anything no, but hey absolutely i like i haven't even read a lot of thrillers i just started picking them up because i they're hate, fun. I, like, yeah, they're <laughs> like, I just need to you know escape from reality all oh, right yeah right. right so that you love the other books i've chosen you <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about those. Yeah, like I, again, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just what what I really like is when a book makes you think, you know, it's yeah. got all of these complex layers and it's just like getting at this like, you know, deep question about the right. human experience. But I didn't have that deep questioning in okay. that perspective right away. No. I really, and maybe it's because I listened to it and I didn't read it. Okay. Right? It was more of like a movie for me, you know, as I was listening, which I love when audiobooks do that. Right. Um, but in order to fully step back and appreciate and understand what the author was trying to do, you know, and evaluate and love it, mm-hmm. I do think that I needed, you know, some time away from it. Yes. And to just really evaluate. How can we like talk about this book without talking about the obvious, which is the, the title of this podcast is. A lot oh, of, yes. I wanted to difficult. actually say I actually yeah. wanted to say that, but I didn't know if we wanted to go there. Oh, we so, have to. So, yes. So, it's, it's, like it's, this is so much we like. This it. is exactly. So we were we had been talking about this book again so much. Like every time something happened, I would be messaging you and we right. were talking and then we were throwing out the, I, talking about this podcast and throwing out a ton like we went through a bunch of names a bunch and some of them were really good but they were taken yes you know um and this one what were we doing we were recording this original podcast or we were recording we were recording verity verity the first podcast and i just spewed out this name no it was it was this this podcast because we didn't have record of it remember right that's true it got like anyways this is why we're re-recording this episode if you're listening if you're still with us we were reco- re-recording this episode and I had just, I, you know, I had a couple glasses of wine. I spewed out this title and you're like, Chi's eyes just lit up. And I was like, well, this is it's it. just this is a it. play on everything yes. that we're doing. Yes. Like the reality she and the gendered she there. Yeah. I, I really liked yes. it. Right. Because it was talking really about Josie in the in the book that she that Josie grasped onto a, re- a specific reality and she'll yes. you know sort of go with don't that don't we all though i know this is exactly I know. why yeah, i like know i know it's why true i think <laughs> yeah i know it's fair right the more we talk about it the more you like the book i do i still don't like the ending but i still really like the book okay and, okay and you know we didn't do uh we didn't do it yet and we this is a perfect segue right is our rating oh and, yeah um right i had rated it a certain way when i was originally uh, record the podcast. I'm gonna change it just by just by point five. <laughs> so you know, I'm gonna read it at four point five. Oh, that's because high. yeah, originally it was three point five, but because after this discussion and really talking about the, I guess the way that she made you think, um, I'm gonna give it that extra point five. But it's still four point five because of the ending. Um, and I have a very high standard for what gets a five star. So it has nothing to do with like a. Yeah. Uh, this is a 
you know, a bad button. Nothing. No. Like I'm no, of a course. very No, a four point five is a good yeah. rating. Yeah. Yeah. Four out of five. Four point five. I give it a four. Yeah, I like a four. Like well, the more I think okay, so initially I gave it a four. But the more I think about it, the the higher the rating goes. So yeah, so I think it's so like you went up how point five and I went point five. Yeah, yeah. And like okay, so let's talk about the structure and the characters. Okay, well, I mean we've kind of talked about the structure, yeah, yeah. what worked. But like you listened to it, so you had a different experience. You could maybe t- you know talk talk about your experience, and I'll I'll talk about what I liked. So I liked, I think that Jules is a okay. I've said it too many times, so I'll just like stop there. But like. The writing style is very poetic, you know, the yeah, prose is really wonderful, um, or prose. And I mean, like, the the, sh- the characters have a lot of nuance and depth, right? I, I really identified with the characters. Um, it sounds like such an un- academic thing to say that I identified with the characters, but I did both, both, I like to say um, now. Uh, whenever I'm doing something that's really crazy, I'm invoking my Josie. Oh, yeah, we joke uh, all the time. All the time. And uh, I think that Alex might just be a white version of me. He's literally the rich white version of me. If they're <laughs> serious, she is like, she's such a people pleaser. And you really so you resonate get with her a, a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> it's so sad. It is such a sad thing to say. So I really wasn't judgmental or annoyed when. She kept doing the thing that you're oh, like. That drove me nuts. Alex, don't say well, yes. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to say yes. You have yeah. the agency. You have the power. Get I know. out of the situation. I was like, and she said yes. I know. And you know what? It was very frustrating. I, I forgot I about that. 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 Was me. I thought that I was like, if anybody is going to have a psychopath or a serial killer in their house and cater to them, it, it probably little do me. you know, <laughs> Chi Chi out oh, yeah. here. Oh, Josie, just kidding. kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I am not Josie. I do not um, exhibit any of her tendencies. Yeah. But yeah, I do. I you know what I I liked about the two. I, while I didn't relate to either of them. I liked that, no offense, <laughs> that kind of sounded very mean, but that didn't no. need to sound like that, um, is that they were very different. Like, Even though they were birthday twins, right? I didn't, they were not twins. They were not remotely the same. Josie, I mean, for what it's worth, Josie had a lot of guts to do what she was doing and like rifling, like just showing up on their doorstep and, you know, grabbing an old magazine, rifling through Alex's stuff, stealing stuff and like, you know, I understand, you know, she's doing it because she's obsessive and there's clearly something that's not, you know, working correctly um, in her reasoning. Right. And unlike Alex, Alex didn't have any guts, like not even at the very end, you know, like, oh, my gosh. She did. No, she didn't. She became a bit assertive at the end. It was good. I mean, kind of. The only oh, guts she had was like, stick it. Yeah, I can't. Like, Wow. Good for you. Um, but I liked that. I liked that they were different. I liked that Lisa Jewell did a good job defining the two differences right. in right. the characters right. and right. We're, how we had a clear understanding of the two different people that were in this ep- uh, episode, the two different people that were in this book. They were different characters. We didn't have any, de- like if we, you know, you were reading, I was listening. I wouldn't think that, oh, is that Josie or is that Alex speaking? Like there was a clear, very, very clear, distinct, distinct voice. Ba- voices, like, definition, like, both written yes. and yeah, audio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Actually, something that I just thought about right now that, you know, it, it might be a critique of the writing. I'm not sure how intentional it was on Jules's part was the class dynamic. Did you pick up on that? Why was the richer, like upper class white woman the more sympathetic character and you've got all of these like so like the way that joe not josie josie's josie's family but josie's history josie's like every even where she lives is written is sort of really what's the word i'm looking for not like i don't know well it's, it's like vilified right she's vilified through the whole thing think that. you didn't think that no okay. i thought that josie came from a okay upbringing no i don't say okay upbringing because of her mother's their relationship with her mom's i didn't honestly think of the socioeconomic differences between the two that did not even cross my mind the entire time i was listening to that it was book. like a play on you know we were birthday twins but we live on the opposite side of yeah, and you know. I I recognize that there's definitely that dynamic, but I didn't think that it played into I guess my overall interpretation mm-hmm. of the outcome of the story. Like I, that never occurred to me. Yeah, sure, she wanted I mean, to be I, Alex, honestly, but I don't know she wanted to be. I don't think she wanted to be Alex because of class 
her class because of the wealth or just because she was doing better, right? Like she had a job. She didn't, she had this life that Josie just admired. Maybe I guess you're right that her beautiful house, you know, it it came in this, like the whole package, right? Yeah. Alex was this whole package, but right. I don't know what if she, would she have felt the same way about Alex if Alex was her neighbor? Probably not. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't I, think more about to that. think about actually, because like, again, the more I think about this book, the more it comes up for me. Yeah, because now I'm reflecting on, well, they kept talking about it. And I it just because the book is really packed with a lot of stuff, right? A lot of ideas and themes. Uh, and it's just really complex. I, it's just something that they, even though it was at the forefront, I was completely you know focus focus on the crazy on yeah, on the actual crazy right which yeah. is the following right. the the stalking um behavior but yeah it was really at the forefront of the podcast like the podcast was described over and over as you know a like a, an exploration of the fact that two people can be born in the same hospital on the same day at the same time and yet live two completely separate lives yeah. why and one of them is doing really well with the fancy home, life. like, you know, life. Doing, and like the other one, life. and like their kids go to, I know, and their kids go to the, and, and like, yeah, they went to the same school, go to the same yeah. school in the same city. Yeah. So now that that's popping up, I wonder if like there was obviously Lisa Jewell is intentional in the, like, and how she wrote um, the class element, but I'm wondering if maybe like how she vilified uh Josie and not just Josie though to me like the more I think about it who participated in Nathan's murder it was again Josie's neighbor right so they were from the same socioeconomic class so I'm wondering if there was something unwitting there where the yeah, uh, maybe I didn't think about that anyway I'm not gonna read too deeply it's yeah I wouldn't <laughs> okay joke <it's> sorry <laughs> no no don't apologize it's a, I, I love that you're thinking you know of you know, a uh, potential underlying theme? Not necessarily or, theme. I'm wondering if the author was as intentional in the way that she, or if she thought, like, why, why I are the... It was some kind of intent, like, oh, this person's going to be from, you know, the upper side. Like, I don't know. I don't know London. Just They're from London or the, yeah. just the UK? I, I think are, no, I'm not absolutely not. About like, Europe? No. <laughs> No, no, I mean, no. I'm just, I mean, you read the book. I was just hoping you'd be like, oh, yes, they were in London. No, I think they were in London. I think they were in London. But yeah, like, I, I didn't think of it that way. And I okay. think, I think maybe Lisa Jewell had to put it that way because maybe we, it, it painted a prettier picture, it painted a better dynamic and, mm -hmm. and better difference between, between the two characters. Because if they were neighbors, I, maybe it wouldn't have the same effect. What? Have you never heard of a, like somebody's neighbor being a serial killer? 100%. I would absolutely have the 100%. same effect. But why would you envy your neighbor if you're in the same circumstance, I guess? You can't be in the exact same circumstance just because you have like houses well, that cost. Okay, but I'm kind of like, arguing against your point. I know. Okay, <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm trying to say that like you said that that was a big deal of the book that made them different, that, that, that caused Josie to be even more obsessed with her because of those differences mm -hmm. so i'm just saying i'm just saying that what you are saying yeah so if they were neighbors then they wouldn't have this she wouldn't have been as obsessed with alex and then you just negated yourself and you said no 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 no, no, no. trying to go back on <laughs> you hear what i'm saying i i think so okay well let's, but I'm lost. let's just leave that point let's just we've wrung that out to dry i think we're good with, i think we're good yeah. yeah so any final words on none of no, I I can't wait to read the next one that you have lined up, and then I have another one lined up. Oh, and yeah, I can't remember the night she disappeared, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's highly rated. Okay, good. Even though I've decided to abandon all highly rated books because the next set of books that we're going to review are highly rated, and I've been highly disappointed in <laughs> some of them. Yeah. Well, some of them are great though. <laughs> all right. Well, ciao. Okay. Bye.